Hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So today's video is a little bit different. I have been going through some like technical stuff with like not having all my equipment, but I just kind of thought of an alternative. Like why not just do my makeup where I usually sit at in my room, put my camera on on a different tripod and just give y'all content this way. So I wanted to do random thoughts about random things. These are just like no rhyme or reason, just different thoughts on pop culture, different thoughts on what's trending and different like just ideologies that I've been thinking of just randomly. So I have like a little Little list that I want to get into as I do my makeup if y'all catch me looking up it's because I'm looking into another mirror to make sure that everything is still in focus as well as my makeup is turning out good I know a lot of people always ask about my makeup so I'm like why not just give y'all some videos like this so if y'all enjoy this content please let me know I can definitely do these a lot more often because literally the setup is super easy so please comment below if you like this I already did my eyebrows because to be honest I feel like eyebrows take so much focus with like filling in carving all of that so I'm like I really just don't like wasting time Time on it but if there's anybody just interested let me know maybe one day I can do that I've also already primed my face and I already straightened my eyelashes because my eyelashes are so curly that it's like it just takes time for me to straighten them all out and make sure I can put my falsies on so yeah these are just things I had to do off camera just to prepare but everything else we're gonna do on camera so without further ado let's get right into this video so the first thing I want to talk about is Love is Blind, Clay, and AD. So I already did a video on them, but honestly, I feel like they've been trending even more and more. There's this whole narrative that AD is or was a sugar baby. And personally, I don't care that she was a sugar baby, but I will say, I just feel like between Clay and AD, I don't understand how y'all can come on a show that is about marriage and then have all of these like external escapades happening, whether it's you're not ready, whether it's you have have another situation whether it's you're not healed whether you have trauma whatever it may be it confuses me as to why some people have come onto the show love is blind and then when everything hits the fan or when you know the season is over or whatever it may be all of a sudden there's all of this like talk about what this person was doing outside of that so my lashes are drying so maybe I can just pull this up and talk about what was said in regards to AD because I was just like this is just extra news okay so literally Clay's friend came into Instagram comments on It's On Site. Shout out to them. Y'all know that's one of my favorite blogs. And he said, I'm Clay's best friend and we've both been living out of Charlotte for years now. AD finances are in fact funny. She has a sugar daddy that is funding her life, bought her a car and apartment. She's not a realtor. Ask her to show us one of the houses she sold or a picture she took with someone in front of the house she sold to them. I'll wait. The never to do a press run to lie on a dude that has said nothing but kind, respectful things about her is nasty work. And then they came back again and said November 2023 around her birthday her sugar daddy confronted Clay and I outside the club stating he was still involved with her and had been the entire time and told Clay to stop messing with her. Just a quick makeup tip by the way sometimes I use my little hand fan and that's how I dry my lashes I'm not gonna lie so literally you can go like this on low you don't want to speak too much because you don't want it to like blow your lash out your hand but this is what I do. So my thoughts on that honestly the whole love is blind Clay and AD story to me is like super duper messy and like I said in my original video I feel like they are both one and the same for some reason it seems like both of them just had again external escapades that have led them to this moment where it's like either they both were not ready for themselves let alone the show in general I don't believe either one of them are super ready to be married again if AD is a sugar baby then so be it however my main thing is not about her being a sugar baby it's more or less like why would you go on a show saying that you're ready for marriage if this is indeed true this could be a rumor now AD did do a podcast and she talked about how like um I had a boyfriend and he owned the nightclub that I worked at because if you watch this season she did say she worked as a realtor and she worked in nightlife at a club she definitely left out the part about her ex-boyfriend maybe she told that to Clay off camera but she didn't say that to the point where us as viewers heard that she said that after the fact in interviews and she basically was saying that when she got the opportunity to do the show because they reached out to all of these people on Instagram there was only like a few of them that actually went through an application process which is crazy she was talking about how they called love is blind called her ex at the time and said hey we like ad for the show can we talk to her basically and then he was just like no she's not interested and then when he told her about it she was like uh give me their number yes i am so i don't know maybe that was the sugar daddy i'm not too sure however i don't think her being a sugar baby is the problem the problem is both of y'all got on the show with the end result being marriage it's literally called love is blind and y'all didn't vet yourselves properly enough to know that you weren't ready for it and and honestly, maybe this was the awakening that they both needed. I'm not going 
gonna go too harsh on either one of them because I feel like I have already. But maybe this was the awakening that they needed to know like, hey, I'm not ready. And whatever ways I've been doing dating all this while, like maybe it just hasn't been working for these reasons that are now very obvious and very public. Now, another makeup tip for lashes. If your lashes like tend to like not stay on, you can definitely use your lash glue and put them on your lash line. For me, I'm very seldom with this because I do have curly lashes and they will revert and it's gonna take me an extra step to um, uncurl them. But if you just kind of press it kind of slowly like that and do that, this has been a lifesaver for me in terms of lashes staying on and actually adhering when you want them to actually be put on because every girl that does lashes knows that when you can't get that lash to look right, it'd be messing up your whole day. Trust me, I've been there. So now that I look like I've been outside in Antarctica, we're gonna let this dry a little bit and then I'm gonna put my lashes on top. This is basically like double, I guess you could say double reinforcement. So yeah, when it comes to Clay and AD, like I personally just don't like think neither one of them are ready. They're both one and the same. I do think it's interesting that even after the season, like it's been like what? like maybe a month now since the season has ended that they're still being talked about there's still more more coming out which goes to show that like I don't understand why Netflix Love is Blind in particular but Netflix as well because they have a lot of other like you know reality TV dating shows they never want to focus on black love but black love has been either the most revered or the most trend worthy aspects of all of these shows like a lot of people tune in just to see like whatever black girl or whatever black guy and how the dynamic is going to be and oftentimes we do see some interracial marriages or couples or whatever from an array of all of the shows but this season black love definitely gave love is blind like a new platform because like even i got my man watching the show with me like he wouldn't watch it by himself but like when we were watching it he was like tuned into it so therefore i just kind of feel like the focus on both of these individuals post show airing has been a lot more entertaining per se maybe not more entertaining but definitely still pretty entertaining to say the least that there's more information coming out i think honestly both of them need to just like separate and like stop talking about each other like we get it it didn't work out he wasn't ready you weren't ready ad thought she was ready but i don't think she truly was and i think they both just need to change their dating strategies as well as seek more therapy so i'm gonna be putting on the lashes now the next thing i wanted to talk about was kate middleton's cancer diagnosis now the only reason why i'm talking about this honestly y'all i'm not i don't really care too much about like the british politics i feel like even in the uk when i speak to some of my uk subscribers y'all say that like nobody necessarily cares that deeply about like the British monarchy. It's kind of like portrayed in a certain way to I feel like everybody else in the world that it's like way more important or just way more adorned and admired than it really is. However, this was some tea. So Kate Middleton is obviously married to Prince William. I remember being in like seventh grade is when they got married and like they were playing it on every TV station. I remember my language arts teacher in seventh grade, like she put that on for us to watch and I'm like we don't care baby we do not I'm gonna try and stay in frame here hopefully there's always been like this eerie factor with the whole royal family and just how people perceive it just like years hundreds of years worth of conspiracies and can I say murders and just crooked and racism and just you know not the best way to present yourself if you consider yourself the monarch or people should look after you um and I think a lot of that has recently been exposed like over the last few years I remember there was a clip that I saw it was like an African I can't remember what country she she was from but it was an older African lady and she was talking about how Queen Elizabeth needs to return the things that they came and stole from her village when she was a little girl and so when you have things that come out like this it's like it draws this idea that okay the British monarchy has been super duper popular and revered all over the world when in reality it seems like there's always something going on behind closed doors obviously we have the whole like you know Harry and Meghan and how much drama was surrounded about that and just you know the race racism that was faced and the way how people perceived her being that she's not a white woman anything that happens with them you know it's kind of like okay I will definitely give it the side eye for sure I don't pay attention but there was a lot of conspiracies that were going on about Kate Middleton as she disappeared in like recent months there was this whole thing I saw on TikTok about how they photoshopped her picture into a family picture with her kids and they were like no and people said that they took that picture from a former magazine cover that she did to make it 
it look like she was presently there when she really wasn't. So then people started coming out with all of these like random conspiracy theories, basically saying like, oh, she's no longer alive or there's been an affair going on or just something. And I was just like, I don't really know if I can believe all of that. However, there will be some type of revelation because like y'all said, we are in the age of Aquarius. So my lashes are on. I hope they look good. They look pretty like crazy right now, but I'm going, I'm doing a photo shoot today. So I want something to stand out for the pictures. So it recently came out that she actually has been diagnosed with cancer, which is super sad, but the conspiracy theories were actually pretty crazy. Like how far people were going to say the things that they were saying. And it kind of made me think like, okay, at least this one time we were proven wrong where essentially nothing was truly happening with her um, in terms of like what people thought. People really were thinking like this lady was killed by the British Royals. By the way, I'm doing foundation. I used the Revlon color stay in cinnamon 600. Hopefully this is still my color, but we gonna see. And I like to use a stippling brush. I do use a sponge sometimes, but it just depends on what I'm feeling like today. I didn't wash my sponges today, so it is what it is. But she did come out and reveal that she does have cancer, which is very, very sad because obviously, you know, your health being je in jeopardy like that is definitely not fun. Um, but also the fact that I feel like, I don't know if she's been, I don't want to use the word forced, but kind of like kind of pushed to come out and say something, being that a lot of people were coming up with their own theories. And I feel like, you know, the UK government was under attack per se, because people were really going in. Like people were really saying like, oh, they had to have done this. They had to have done that we're not gonna believe this because honestly what they had to go off of was in my opinion kind of valid like if we're seeing that her face was photoshopped onto a picture um yeah that means you guys definitely are hiding something and you know it was pretty interesting how like fbi per se that the internet is these days because it's like we can easily get to the bottom of stuff or at least we have enough like common sense these days or um just knowledge and how social media works and you know propaganda and the press to know that Sometimes the things that they feed us are not real. Like, it's not real. I will say I'm happy to know that she is alive, um, but it is very sad that, yeah, she's going through what she's going through. But I wanted to just touch on this because the conspiracies were really crazy. And I'm not gonna lie, I did like do somewhat of a dive on this. Like I was going down so many Twitter threads, like trying to figure out like what was going on, trying to see if like, if this really true, um, what do, you know, local people that live in the UK and specifically specifically London think like what do y'all think um so to my UK girlies that watch me shout out to y'all let me know like is it true that people just don't care like that um and it's just more of like a Americanized obsession because I don't even think people care in America in all honesty like I feel like people just think like oh wow royalty you know monarchy that whole idea of there still being an active monarch in today's time is interesting which I think it is but I don't think it really is something that in my day-to-day -day life I look into that deeply that's just me. So the next thing I'm gonna do is highlight my face. Um, I like to use the LA Girl, I'm an old school girly, y'all know me, but I like to use the LA Girl Pro Concealer. Oh, hold on, that's backwards. <laughs> I like to use the LA Girl Pro Concealer in Fawn. I've been using this since high school. I use it in every video. The next thing I wanted to talk about is this girl trip experience that was trending on Twitter. I do wanna start off by saying like, right before I started filming, I saw on Twitter that um, the story was fake. It went viral on TikTok. I didn't watch the whole thing because honestly I'm a little burnt out with like how TikTok is now becoming this like story time platform where I have to watch 11,000 parts. I'm gonna be real y'all I couldn't finish Risa Tisa. I did get to part 10 but I ended up watching like an eight minute video that summarized everything because I just I don't know. I know I talk a lot but my intention span when it comes to some of this stuff I gotta be locked in you feel me and damn near sedated to hear all of this stuff. But what I took from it is that there was a girl who said that she went on a trip to Mexico I believe and that she had a friend that came who literally only brought $135. This is why I deadass don't do group trips. I don't do girls trips. Every time I travel, I always travel with one person that's my best friend because why I just came back from Cabo and one of the girls did not bring no bread to the trip. So story time on why the fuck I would never do a girls trip again. So mind you, before I even booked the trip, my intuition told me not to go on the trip. Like I was the last person to book. I spoke to my mom. She told me to follow my gut. She told me not to book. But it was one of my homegirls' birthday and I never ever celebrated her birthday with her. So I was just like, I like traveling. Fuck it, I'll pop out to the trip. The reason I wanted to go wasn't because of her though. It was because of the people she was inviting to the trip. So I was just like, if 
I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go if she invites just her friends. I'm gonna invite somebody myself. And I did. I invited my man. My man is not my man, but he is my man, but that's all another story for next time. And before y'all even say anything, I asked her first before we made the trip to go together because she knows him and we only hang out together, so she was okay with it. Plus, it's also good to have a male figure around that you can trust because girls like to drink. And he looked out for us the whole trip. So fast forward to Thursday, before we went on the trip, we left Friday morning at 5 a.m. We all went to my friend's birthday dinner. We gonna call her Keisha. Keisha had her birthday dinner the night before. She invited two other girls and one of the girls was going on the trip with us. We gonna call the other girl Imani. We all ordering, having a good time, but like Imani vibe from like the very jump is throwing me the fuck off. Like she gives like pick me, yes man, I'm a fan type of vibe. You know one of those girls out you can peep just follows you around because she just wants to be like accepted so bad. Yeah, she was one of those girls. But I'm like not my friend, not my problem. So she can do whatever the hell she gonna do. But one thing about it, I can read a person, and I'm never wrong. Every person she brought around me, I told them exactly who they were, and before they even showed them who the fuck they was, I was right. But we ordered, we tasting food. I'm vibing with the girl that's sitting next to me. She did go on the trip. But when the bill came, the bill was like seven hundred and ninety dollars or something like that. That's valid for four people, especially since we went to a nice restaurant. Mind you, if you do the math, it was only one hundred eighty-one dollars per person. My bad, this was the receipt. It was seven hundred twenty-four dollars. But I put it on my card because like I didn't really care. Everybody sent me their bread automatically. The other two girls sent me bread. All of a sudden, her cash app is not working. Her Zelle is not working. Her Venmo is not working. Her PayPal is not working. Her Apple Pay is not working. Talking about oh, it must be the service. Talking about everybody's service was great when they sent me my bread. Now it's your turn. Your service is bad. Come to find out, this girl shorted me forty-six dollars. Now I was definitely pissed about it because girl, I don't even know you for you to be me bread. She was like, oh, did you pay yet or can I tap? Girl, obviously you saw me put my card down for the whole bill. That's why everybody sent me the bread. That's what I paid. She showed me she only had hundred and thirty-five dollars in her bank account. Why do you only have hundred thirty-five dollars in your bank account? Leave tomorrow. So I'm like, maybe she gets paid tomorrow because it was Thursday. We left on a Friday. So she sent me the bread and I got the bread of hundred thirty-five dollars and she was just like, I owe you forty-six dollars. So I'm like, okay, thinking she's gonna pay me tomorrow because it's Friday. Yeah, I never got that bread. And once I peeped, that's all the money she had in her bank account. Oh, I was tight. All right, I have one beauty blender. It's not clean and it's not even that soft and supple, but hopefully it works. When it comes to girls trips, I think there's more of like a social media heavy presence about them because everybody wants to show their boomerang that they make of them and their passports with their friends. Everybody wants to show all their girls sipping, you know, crazy cocktails and being lit, drunk and fun. Everybody wants to show themselves in some type of tropical island, in bikinis. Everybody just wants to show that they had a good time. And I think for a mature group of women, and I'm talking maybe, I, I, I will say even like 30 plus, cause I don't know, some of us girls in our 20s, we just don't be mature enough to like do stuff for real. Um, Trust me, been there, done that. It takes a mature group of women to go on a successful vacation, especially if it's out of the country. You know, there's a lot of college students that will go down to spring break Miami, which I saw they try to make a lot of reparations this year. I thought people weren't actually gonna come until I was watching people's Snapchat stories and Instagram stories that I like didn't go to school with them, but they go to the school that I went to and I see that they were still down there having a good old time. So I'm like, okay, well shit, Miami, they tried to tell y'all, but I guess y'all still went down there and it's still March and April. So people are gonna still be going down there. When I saw the story about the girl only bringing $135, I will say outright to bring $135 on a trip, I don't know if that's wrong or right. I feel like it really does depend. Like when I've gone to Nigeria, I'm not gonna lie, I go with my family, like specifically my dad. So it is pretty much like easier for me to not have to spend money because my dad will definitely like take care of all the stuff. But for my own personal spending, like if I wanna buy stuff for my friends or you know, get some new custom Nigerian material made or anything that I want, I do bring money. And the last time I went to Nigeria, which was 2022 into 2023, I went for Detsi December. I kid you not, I only brought like $300 for the whole three weeks I was there and I didn't even spend all of it. Now, Nigeria is different. Your money can stretch longer, but I don't know what a trip entails in terms of bringing money. Like if you're going to an all-inclusive place, maybe you don't need as much money, but I've never done that. Personally, I just don't know. I feel like $135 for like a few days of a trip in a foreign country where you can get more for your buck, it might actually stretch, but y'all can tell me I've never been to Mexico, hopefully one day. I, my whole thing is I just think it's crazy to tell somebody how much money that they need to bring for something, but I do think that priorities need to be prioritized. A lot of women are so hyper about going out and spending and looking like the part and doing all that stuff, but they don't have their finances in order to even do it. I just feel like people need to prioritize what matters and also don't bite off more than you can chew. If you're the type of person that you know you don't have it right now, then don't go on the trip. And then also if you're the friend that knows that you expect more people to have more money, um, the people that you're inviting, maybe you're arranging the trip, then you also need to be very firm with exactly what to bring and make sure you can confirm that. Honestly, girls trips is like going downhill. I've seen a lot with this whole Miami spring break this year. Girls is fighting, falling out. There's this whole like narrative that if you go to Miami with a group of friends, y'all don't come back as friends. And honestly, I have my own story on that um, from college. Maybe I'll share that one day because that did happen to me. But it was interesting to see all this unfold in everybody's opinions. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is contour my face. So I'm using the black radiance. I think everybody that's a black girl does this. Um, I used to use Fenty and I like Fenty, but I don't know what happened to it. So I'm gonna be using the darkest shade to do my full face contour, which is gonna be my cheekbones, my nose, my forehead, and then also my chin. Sorry if I'm in and out of focus. It's my first time doing this, but I hope you guys still like it. Um, the next thing I want to talk about was something that I really want to talk about. And this is Instagram models, rapper baby mamas, just not hitting the same. I feel like there was a point in time on 
on the internet where if you were, you know, IG famous or had the certain look for Instagram, people really championed you. People really promoted you. People looked up to you. We had the whole viral sensation from the um, Instagram, or excuse me, the TikTok comedian, Terry Reloaded, how he was making the whole, you know, I want to be Jada with I want to be Jada with I. And I actually thought it was funny. And even Jada Weta endorsed that. And I think... <clears throat> Make sure y'all stay hydrated. Oh, and another tip, Vida Coca. This keeps you so hydrated. I drink so many of these a day. Love me some Vida Coca. Please sponsor me. But yeah, I feel like at one point, you know, Instagram models, rapper baby mamas, like they were so revered to the point where people literally were getting their bodies done, filler, different surgical procedures, even as far as fashion. We used to see them pretty much promoting Fashion Nova. They still do. Promoting all these different like IG boutiques, IG fashion, even their affiliation to certain types of men, such as rappers and athletes and, you know, just scammers whatever it may have been um was like a huge thing and i remember this was like 2019 2020 2021 i would say before the pandemic during the pandemic and after the pandemic is when they were at their height like they had peaked where everybody wanted to be something like that and of course i don't mean everybody i know there's a lot of y'all that watch me that have common sense that you wouldn't just be somebody because they're on the internet and they're famous but a lot of young women champion these girls um and especially even like the female rappers but the only reason i kind of leave the female rappers out of it is because the female rappers to me are usually like more contract obligated like they're under some type of agreement or contract to sell an image to make sales to generate back to somebody else that's bigger than them and I feel like sometimes a lot of those girls aren't even who they say they are or maybe they are and um, they're just doing a job. Now granted, being an Instagram model to me is a job because I hate when people try to downplay social media being a job when a lot of people on social media are making a lot of money. Give me one second, someone's calling me. Hello? Yeah, you see the designer with the, uh, white on black? Oh, hold on one second, my bad, my phone was down. Uh, I'm getting something custom made for my boyfriend and he doesn't know and he's like, who that man you keep talking to? And I'm just like, you'll see. I'll be in Atlanta in a few days, um, which is where you say that. But anyway, I kind of feel like back in the day, there was like a lot more infatuation. And then I recently like saw some posts from like Jada and Ari. And um, I just kept telling myself like, either we got older, like the people that cared when they were at their peak that were around the same age as them, we got older and we stopped caring or something just isn't the same. So y'all, my camera had just cut off randomly. I was looking for this tweet because I saw it and I should have screenshot it, but I didn't. But it was basically saying how like Jada Weta um, in particular has shown a lot of insecurity over the years. But like, you know, what young woman in her 20s doesn't go through an episode of insecurity let alone a point in her life where, you know, her insecurities have taken over. Hence why we see, you know, the lip fillers, the butt shots, the BBLs, the Ozempic that's super trendy, the ab sketching, the permanent bras in the boobs for the, like, all of that stuff that a lot of these girls are doing. And it just made me realize that, like, a lot of these girls aren't as popular or as renowned as they used to be because I think people are just over it. On top of that, it's no longer a trend. You can watch the show Baddies, which I'm about to get into next, and you can see that, like, like every girl on there has their body done. Every girl on there pretty much kind of somewhat looks the same from the lip injections to the BBL shaped body, even if it's not a BBL, everybody looks the same. I'm gonna be doing eyeliner. I like to use a felt tip. I don't use anything but this. For the girls that can do like the little brush on eyeliner, more power to you, that is not for me. And it's gonna be hard for me to do this and talk, but I'm gonna try. But yeah, you can literally see like on all of these reality TV shows or just all the girls that are deemed like super popular on Instagram or just just that look like it all is exactly the same which I literally did a video about this it went pretty viral about two summers ago um just basically saying how everybody looks the same and honestly I was just doing that video to kind of like just talk about like what I see as someone who is in the same age range as a lot of these young women and I think that even some of that has 
rubbed off on older women. Um, there's often times where I see a lot of women on some of these other reality TV shows that, you know, feature women who are a bit older and they also have gotten work done. And I feel like it's always been a lot more like made sense in my head for older women of a particular age to get these enhancements because I mean, that's what they are. They're surgical procedures. They're usually supposed to be anti-aging, but at this point it's like more for cosmetics. Like it's more for looking good for social media. It's supposed to be like, oh, my Instagram and or Snapchat filters, but I want to see it in real life. And I see different posts that have nothing to do with literal bodies or anything, but then you'll see somebody and they'll have some sort of like enhancement. And I'm like cringing because I'm like, what has this world come to? A lot of these Instagram models, rapper baby mamas, they literally have influenced a lot of young women to not even be themselves. And I know people want to throw the debate around about like natural versus not natural. But I think what has happened is that a lot of people have come to realization that being natural, being yourself, being who you are and who you're supposed to be will always just hit harder. Like I think a lot of people have started to shift to becoming more accepting of their bodies. Like granted, I'm putting on a full face of makeup right now as we can see, but it's still like we have to make it make sense when it comes to what we're actually sending out to a lot of people and how reasonable it is. And I think when it comes to the rapper baby mamas, like they've shown that a lot of their lifestyles when it comes to their look and even what goes on in their personal lives isn't as revered. It's not as pretty. It's not as sprinkles and rainbows and unicorns as people think it is. Okay, so y'all, I literally just did my bottom eyeliner, which is just a black eye pencil. Um, I used Ruby Kisses. For most of this stuff, this is beauty supply store products, but I guess my camera wasn't recording, so I'm just gonna go over it. But I feel like with a lot of these girls, honestly, their lifestyles aren't really as mesmerizing as we thought that they were. And I feel like the more that they talked and the more that they opened up about a lot of stuff um, through reality TV or just posting stuff on social media or simply them getting exposed by certain people, whatever it may be, a lot of people kind of tuned out of that because they realized like, this isn't what I thought it was. Like, this is kind of like, okay, pretty girl, great lifestyle, money, followers, and all that great stuff. But deep down, it's not as fairy tale as we thought. And I just kind of see that with a lot of like these women. Even when I just saw a video of Ari, she was doing this little promotion with her and Moneybag. Obviously, they're dating. I'm about to bake my face. Um, This is the Kissed Pro Touch. This is in the color earth um but i mixed it with ben nye i haven't given up on ben nye i know some people like one time i did my makeup on camera years ago and somebody was like girl why are you still using ben nye it gives this it gives that girl it, it worked for me you know what i'm saying it works for me um but i'm gonna use this i don't even know where my ben nye is but it's kind of mixed in here a little bit so but if it is a little bit darker because this one might be um it is what it is my picture's still gonna come out cute i like to use the angled beauty blender to pat it on there let me pat it and then bake. But yeah, I just saw this video of Ari and Moneybag and it was basically just her like shaking her booty, him throwing money, like just like the what you would think a rapper relationship would be, like a hip hop rapper relationship would be with an Instagram model because that's all they really sell us is, you know, luxury, money, sex, um, flexing, things of that nature. And when I watched it, I was just like, oh, okay, like same old, same old. Like maybe a few years ago, this was like, oh yes, goals or whatever for some people, you know me, I ain't never really been too much of that but for me now as someone who's 26 and you know I've been on social media doing what I've been doing for a very long time so I've seen a lot of different things I'm just like oh, okay well at some point like people just aren't gonna care as much and I still thought like their relationship is cute like I've even said I do like them together um, I don't know if that's a popular opinion or not but I just like don't necessarily care when I see this stuff anymore like at one point I did like the girls for their fashion their makeup their pictures I really did but now now, like just being older I just don't care and I think a lot of people are there now where it's just like oh okay well this is just something that we've already seen so many times in so many different ways everybody has copied off of them um, and maybe they weren't necessarily trendsetters for some people but I do think they have set a lot of social media trends over the years just from the fashion and the beauty aspect of it um, especially with the enhanced beauty and not just them but like Kylie Jenner the Kardashians all of them played a role I'm um, so much so that I feel like the Kardashians really started copying off of the 
the, the black girls if we're being real but yeah i just look at it now and i'm just like mm, do people really care like that i'm not gonna say that they fell off but i definitely do think like people just aren't as mesmerized by instagram models and stuff and i feel like now that a lot of the stuff has come into the light where people can see how transparently their lives aren't as what we thought they were it kind of is what it is now okay so moving on to the next part is mascara this is my favorite part i use the nika k new york y'all gotta see this hold on this is it it's the one with the blue let me show y'all the wands. Here is the tip. People always ask me about like my bottom lashes. You gotta get the one with the spikes, okay? The spike ballpoint tip is gonna give you the lashes that you want on the bottom row. I learned this a long time ago um, and I've, I don't use anything but this. I used to use the Better Than Sex and that one was very good. It was definitely better than sex. But um, I switched over to a lot more drugstore products because I feel like you can get a full face with drugstore and look bomb. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm using. So I'm about to show y'all that. So my next topic that I to touch on is everyone's most ratchet show on Zeus Network, Baddies. So Baddies Caribbean is coming out very soon and they also announced their cast. I'm not gonna lie y'all, most of them girls on there, I did not know. Um, the returning girls is funny that um, they didn't put like Roly, but we all know that Roly's gonna come back. It's crazy that she wasn't a part of the auditions, but she claimed she was trying to heal from surgery. We know that was a lie. Um, lie detector told us that was a lie about 1100 times so basically what y'all want to do is y'all just want to use that tip and slightly brush over slightly just little 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 strokes you know what i'm saying little little strokes just coat it so that it can be separated and this is hard because you don't want to get it on your actual like under eye but i mess it up all the time and i still feel like it looks good granted i have like big eyes so it just makes my eyes look more pronounced but you just want to slightly brush a little glob of the mascara over it y'all see that all right let's do the other eye but yeah baddies there was a whole bunch of people in the cast and i know that they've already started filming um there's some girls that have returned when i watched the auditions i didn't finish the last one which i should and i probably will tonight with my boyfriend um because his commentary actually is hilarious yeah like they just was given bullies for the most part and then on top of that i don't know what they considered bad i don't know if they've actually chosen real baddies but we all know that they select a lot of these girls prior to and then the girls that they say are from the auditions they just have them show up and make it seem like they auditioned when in reality they did not most of those girls that are new girls they're instagram models per se i think so or maybe they're just known on social media and i don't know them but baddies is a business like zeus network that's a business so i feel like they don't want to take a chance on new talent I mean, in most cases they want girls that are already established to put them on kind of like a redemption show and i think that's kind of what it's kind of changed into like girls that are known on social media that they want to give more of a platform to or people from other tv networks that they want to bring back so that the fans can recognize them and be like oh whatever happened to this person from this show that i used to watch like five ten years ago now that they're on baddies i want to see them more so i don't know i don't have anything to say no real like prognostications on what is to come with baddies caribbean i do think it's interesting though that they do have hella people and i knew that they would do this because it's just too popular right now and there's a lot more um people that are interested in this but it's interesting to also see that the returning girls are pretty much everybody that made it to the end of last season minus sky i think and then i'm not sure if there's anybody else i didn't look that deeply but we just want to see how it all plays out transitioning from that is the show that they're about to release featuring roly and her surgeries i don't remember the name of it i just saw it on like instagram and twitter and i'm just like basically what the show is about is roly transforming her body i think actually i think it's called transforming roly correct me if i'm wrong i'll look it up after this but it's supposed to be her getting her surgery and there was a lot of like moments where she was super emotional like tearing up crying showing the pain and the recovery of her whole entire procedures because she has gotten a lot done she's getting lipo bbl her neck fat sucked out all of these different things and i'm just like i think my theory is that they're trying to reintroduce roly in a better light and if y'all remember if you watched season two of baddies they did say that roly was supposed to get her own show and i know a lot of people kind of clown roly like girl you ain't never get your own show you work for zeus but maybe this was the show that they were planning to give her so maybe roly wasn't lying but on top of that i think they're trying to really reintroduce roly in like a more positive light because if people watch that show and they promote it and they see like okay she's going through a lot of trials 
and tribulations either with her cosmetic work or just what led her to be in the body position that she's been in. People are going to resonate with that, especially bigger women. And people will have sympathy for her and kind of forget about how she just acted on baddies for the last like two seasons, especially this last season of Baddies East. Yeah, that's just my theory on that. I don't know. I don't really plan on watching the show. When they hit social media, I'll check out the clips, but I don't think I'm going to tune in. I'll try to watch the first episode. If it's good, I'll give it another shot because I do watch stuff. I'm like, okay, let me just see if I like this. But I don't know. I don't really care for Roly anymore. And it's crazy because at one point, I really did like Roly. Now, when it comes to this bottom mascara, let it dry for a little bit and then you can go over it for how thick you want. I think I'm going to just leave it at this. And my tip is to always do it while you're baking because if you do just so happen to get like a little smudge underneath your eye, once you're done baking and everything dries, you can just brush that away. Tips from Chama. I'm giving out free game here. Free, free game. Okay, so while this is baking, we're going to do which is like the last second to last step, which is my lips. Another one that's super requested. Let me get my materials. All right, so basically I'm going to wipe off whatever's on here. All right, so all you need is your good old kiss. Where you at kiss? Yes, kiss in the color what color is this dark brown i use this i've been using it haven't stopped using it won't stop using it 99 cent if not 199 if not at most 299 kiss in dark brown is gonna do it every time for me so i'm gonna line my lips because i can't talk and do that at the same time so i'll probably speed past this but the tip is to just kind of overline at the top points of your lips right here um and also a little bit where the corners are That is it for right now. So I don't really overline my bottom lip because I already know my bottom lip is huge. Y'all ain't got to tell me, you feel me? But yeah, just the top here, you want to create that, you know, really heart-shaped look. I think naturally my lips are like that. My lips have been dry for like the whole week. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to fix them, but this will. And then for the last step for a lip is the Ruby Kisses. Ruby Kisses needs to sponsor me, baby, because I be using their products. This one, y'all know Beauty Supply Store Lip Gloss on Always Hit, and this is my favorite. This is the one. This has never done me wrong, and we're just gonna go over that. So you can stop squeezing and then use like the lip area of the dispenser to kind of start to blend. The blending process to me takes the most time. So this is pretty much how I do my lips for every video. Sometimes it may differ just off of like how much lip liner I use, but other than that, this is how it goes. Okay y'all, so to end off this video, the last topic I wanna touch on is black men comically impersonating black women because I see a lot of this and I feel like it's just been standing out to me a little bit more for some reason. Um, there was a video that I saw of Tyler Perry pretending to be Beyonce, I think it was. And like, I don't know, some of the comments were pretty interesting because people were saying like, oh, he was probably living in his truth, whatever, that's trolling. I don't know too much about that. However, I do think it's funny that there's been this constant pattern of black men, especially in comedy or entertainment, that utilize the whole black woman stereotype and caricature of a ghetto hood, uneducated, stereotypical black woman to literally make their commentary and their comedy. And a lot of them are millionaires off of this. The last step we're gonna do for the makeup is basically just getting all this baking done. We've been baking for a while and I think I'm ready. The buns is ready, okay? Yeah, so I saw the video of Tyler Perry and I was just like, Tyler Perry is not the only one that does this. You know, obviously he has the whole Medea thing. We've seen Big Mama. I watched Big Mama recently and I was just like, I loved this movie when I was like, you know, a kid. But it was just very interesting that like, this has been a part of a lot of comedy for black men. And there's so many different ones. We have Blame It On Quay as a caricature. Um, we also have like, earlier I was talking about the creator on TikTok that does the whole I Wanna Be Jedi Wera. Um, his name is Terry Reloaded and like you know that's how he got super popular on TikTok was making that caricature of like a ghetto Haitian girl you know it's just doing all of these like scandalous things all the time I find it very interesting that this has been the pinnacle of black comedy for a long time you don't see women doing this I can't name any mainstream black woman whose whole entire existence is off of being a stere stereotypical caricature of a black man it just doesn't really exist and it's not that black women can't do it but I don't think that we find that much comedy in making a stereotype that public and that you know enjoyable to not just 
black communities, but other types of communities as well. I feel like that's just something that people have to really think about when they look at all of these different funny videos or people that are going viral. I feel like people should be able to be funny without all of like the extra like, it's not always disrespect, but this playing into a stereotype to me is like, you want people to visualize your community in a certain way. And if you are now millionaires and somewhat billionaires off of doing so, what message does that send to other races of people about what exactly black women are? So then when you have all of these other women Women who are just real women being themselves but they're being promoted to be the face of like black entertainment in certain ways whether it's music or acting or comedy or whatever and then it makes sense like there's a reason why sexy red is so huge maybe she's a cool girl outside of that but some of the things that she says is like this is so stereotypical this gotta be a character like something tells me that sexy red might just be a cool girl in reality like okay she probably one of the joints I could possibly hang out with but her image I just can't wrap my head around I can't get with it that's just not my type of girl but then when you see stuff like Medea and Big Mama and um, all the other ones, I can't even think of them off my head. It's like, okay, well, a lot of us have been kind of patronizing this type of imagery for decades at this point, And it's been pretty lucrative for a lot of these people, as well as entertainment for the whole entire community and other communities as well. So y'all, the last step I'm going to do is actually go back into my Black Radiance palette. And we're going to be doing... Sorry, y'all, my boyfriend called. But we're going to use this beautiful illumination color right here. I probably haven't even used it. I haven't been highlighting like that, but I need to be a shining, shining, shining girl. Shining, 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 yeah. And I know I could get that deep. And we're gonna put that on my cheeks, nose, and some other areas. But I just want like the community to kind of divest from that. I want us to kind of return back to comedy that isn't always so deep fried in stereotypes. I feel like a joke here and there, or maybe that is your whole entire set, that's not that bad because there's things that we can laugh at. And at the end of the day, stereotypes are true. They're just not true for everyone. And I think that when you make your name off of being a stereotype, literally it does stick with people and it does make people of other communities believe that this is all this person is or all of these people are the same and I have noticed that the older I've gotten um now that I'm just you know out in the world on my own trying to figure stuff out sorry y'all can't talk <laughs> but out in the world on my own just trying to figure stuff out like a lot of this stuff does end up catching up to us and making us literally look as if that's all black women can do is be loud be ratchet be ghetto cuss a lot have kids everywhere multiple baby daddies and things of that nature and I feel like that doesn't represent a lot of black women like there's maybe a lot of black women that do have that but that doesn't represent every single person every single black woman that exists I personally feel like you know I'm just not fond of all of that and I've been seeing it a lot more often and I feel like we should just use comedy to get back to things that actually make us laugh. Those things can be funny and they are but the trade-off to that is literally downing an aspect of your community to make other people laugh when they're not necessarily laughing with you they're laughing at you. Definitely sip on that. Y'all this is the final look. Again I'm looking up because my mirror is over there. I'm about to take my rollers down. I curled my hair yesterday and then I'm like oh I don't want to sleep on this and like my hair just ends up being flat or messy up so I put the flexi rods in I haven't done flexi rods in a long time but I will come back to y'all once everything is said and done I hope you all enjoyed this video please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below please let me know also if you like this video content style because I can definitely do way more of these I sit in this room anyway all day so I might as well do something also if you haven't followed me on my socials definitely check that out especially my TikTok. y'all know I've been trying to push out content on there I had a little hiatus but you know I'm back and I want y'all to see me and I will see y'all in my my next video. Bye y'all. Queen. Chama. It's all about me. Don't care about you. Yeah, I'm a 10 like five times two. Whatever I say, y'all gotta do on who, on you, on who, on you, on all. Hail the queen. QC. Yeah, she is risen. Presence is a gift, so I come with the ribbon. Internet told me stop rapping. I ain't listen to him. No, I really got more bars in the prison system. Right? You yeah, one beef. Step into the kitchen. Murder flows. You can suspect I am not the victim. Be queen. D's on that bitch like we with the pistons. Red cherry, red bottoms. I know how to pick them. Always got a secret plan. I don't do the fighting. Shorty is a secret fan. Yeah, she ghost riding. Brown skin beauty with a booty show time. Go off on the tangent. I don't need a cosign. So baddies women that are cheap about a dozen. Hot girl straight up out the microwave oven. Gotta bring a chicken man before you get to stuffing. And this beat going crazy snapping on percussion. Trauma at the top. I'm the number one prospect. Beat from Lakia when she slid on cosmic. Tell him coming here, boo. I'm trying to make your jaw snap. I got no pics, but I want to see your pockets. Big glossy lips trying to mouth like a faucet. Beat chicken knees, so I put them in a cockpit. Cooking in the studio. Call me dirty crockpit.
like gingerbread, baby, running fast like Sonic. It's commendable, was a ceremony, but now it's a festival. New money now, so you gotta move a decimal. Presidential sweet, and it's looking all congressional. I'm so delectable for your queen card, cause mine is a collectible. Better mind your business and stay up off my genitals. Probably make them high, cause my body's like an edible. Wait, let me stop, cause I'm trying to be professional. Damn. I know that's what y'all said when you heard that verse. Y'all was like, damn.